And the journey continues with Spec Ops. Welcome back to another edition of Dro Talks Audiobooks. Dro here today. I'm going to be talking about book two of the Expeditionary Force series by Craig Allison and narrated by R.C. Bray. Book two is Spec Ops. The book is good. It's I would say this is the weakest book in the series, but I, I still think you need to kind of go through it because a couple important plot points are open up here, especially involving the elders. And why is this book subpar to book one and probably subpar to the rest of the books in the series? Well, that is easy. And, and I think a lot of this happens uh, to do with uh, Craig Allenson. So Craig Allen, it's a little, a little bit of backstory on him. Uh, he had a career. I want to say he was a pilot, but I'm not 100% sure. But he had a career. He had a full-time job. And he was writing on the side. And he wrote Expeditionary Forces, if I'm not mistaken. And it kind of took off. And then uh, he wrote this book as well while he was still working. And uh, Expeditionary Forces Book 1, as I kind of mentioned in my first uh, review, you have uh, Joe Bishop, who's a, a sergeant turned colonel, who finds a advanced AI in the shape of a beer can, and you get this kind of uh, Rodom relationship between the two. They're both kind of jerks. They're both very snarky, and and they really feed well amongst each other. It's kind of like a, a buddy cop movie, but in space, and the military is involved, and one of the buddy cops is uh, AI. So it works very well, and it works very well in this book as well. Uh, the reason this book falls a little bit short is it's very repetitive. And, and and that can actually be saying for the whole series. So what do I mean by repetitive? Um, at the end of book one, spoilers for book one. At the end of book one, uh, Joe Bishop and a ragtag team of humans escape paradise with Skippy. And uh, they steal a starship and they return to Earth. And then Earth right away sees this as an opportunity and they want to send the starship to gather more intel, more information. So they spend out this spec op team with uh, a much larger crew with people from Earth, uh, with special operations, with scientists to learn from Skippy, people to work the gardens and the spaceship, you name it. And um, and they don't want Bishop involved because they, they do not recognize his status as colonel. But Skippy uh, says he won't go without Bishop because bros be bros. Uh, so they they reluctantly the UN reluctantly sends Bishop as colonel as commander of the starship but they put uh, another individual from China Chang as the XO and then you get this kind of um, tension between the two right because Chang is I mean he is a commander he has a lot of experience he knows how to lead people and you get Bishop who is a sergeant so he has led people but in a much smaller scale much more intimate so so you have that dynamic they go out into space and this is where the repetition begins for this book and pretty much for the entire series and that's there's a problem it's impossible skippy can't figure out a solution uh bishop like has an epiphany and he comes up with a solution utilizing the amazing powers of skippy uh, and skippy just becomes more powerful and more powerful and more powerful in the series and it repeats and this is pretty much a consistent pattern throughout the entire series the difference here is the problems here are much more repetitive so i mean you go through this i want to say it's three or four times and and it does kind of start to feel old a little bit really quick and uh the later books the same formula repeats but it's done less throughout and the odds are seem a lot more um impossible so it's a little bit more satisfying in how they come up with this together but this book is kind of a must listen if you do want to get into the series. I suppose you could avoid it, um, but you would miss some key world building elements. I guess world building is inadequate for these type of series. Universe building elements that do lay root in this book right here. And um, you do get, you miss a lot of the capabilities of what Skippy is um, capable of capabilities or what Skippy's capable of now that's a saying so these do become and play more roles in future and future books within this series 
So does this mean this is a bad book? I wouldn't call this a bad book. I enjoyed this book. I really liked it. It's, it's very funny. Uh, the dynamic between the bros, Skippy and, and Joe Bishop, Colonel Bishop, is, is, is really awesome. It's just a little bit repetitive. So I do want to, you know, fair warning where warnings are due. And that is my story, and I'm sticking to it. But, you know, anytime Skippy does come alive, he is, he does steal the show, be him and Bishop. So I do recommend this book. But just do realize you're going to hit, this is the pitfall of the series. From here, it does start picking up and become stronger and stronger. So, have you listened to Expeditionary Forces Spec Ops? Do you agree with my assessment? Was this the worst book so far in the series? Or did you really like it? Am I dead wrong? Comment below, let me know. And if you like these reviews, you like audiobooks, you, you like learning about all these uh, sci-fi, military, uh, lit RPG, fantasy novels, subscribe. Ring that bell to get notified, and we'll see you next time.